Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are discussing the 2023 Bram Stoker Award winner. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And today we are talking about a little book that came out last year called The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. And this recently just won the 2023 uh, Stoker Award. I think this was like at the beginning of the summer. And yeah, we're, I'm, I'm going to do non-spoilers. I'm going to tell you why you should read this book. Here, you'll need this. Brian handed me the weapon while mumbling something about the safety and making sure it ended at the bottom of a lake and not in my car. I took the gun from him and looked at it. It looked just like the gun in movies, but was heavier than I expected. There was writing on it, 9mm Luger, Smith & Wesson. My gun knowledge was limited, but I knew the thing could spit death and that was all that mattered. We've been strangling and beating each other with rocks and sticks since we stopped dragging our knuckles and swinging from branches. Guns are the natural next step. There is something unsettling about how we're given life then spend a large part of it trying to engineer better ways of killing others. That said, the cool, hard metal made me feel good. But the Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias is about a man named Mario and his daughter. This isn't a spoiler. It's in like probably like the first 30 pages. Um, his daughter dies of cancer. And, you know, he's um, he's. A Spanish-speaking individual. He's an immigrant to this country. Actually, I don't believe he's an immigrant, but I think his mother was. I think he's probably first-generation American. And, you know, he experiences things like racism, stuff like that, that have prevented him from getting, like, a well-paying job, even though he has the degree. He's bilingual. All these things, like, that you would think would help him in a job market because of where he's from, because of the color of his skin. He's been held back from this opportunity. And so he resorts to kind of like seedy ways of getting money in hopes that he can help pay for his daughter's care. Uh, but then when his daughter tragically dies, he is offered a chance to win 200, not to win, but like to get $200,000 for one job with a meth head that he knows and a man who's going to help them cross the border named Wonka. And, you know, things happen from there. That's all, that's kind of all the plot details I want to give out. Uh, I, I will say, uh, if that sounds like kind of like a straightforward kind of crime thriller, why did this win a horror award, stuff like that, read the book. I think when you get to the end, you will understand, like, oh, I, I see, like, the horror elements here. Um, it, it is, and this is not going to be a book that's for everybody. It's a dark book. It's a bleak book. It's very nihilistic. It's very... The way that they, he talks about violence, the way these things sort of transpire, it's it's not for the faint of heart. Like if if you are someone who is like easily depressed by something that you read, if you're easily, you know, if you can't read a sad book without also like being sad and devastated, like I, I probably would caution you before entering this book because it's not it's not going to be for everyone. Uh, but Iglesias has this like, wonderful writing style that I think, like, it really, like, transports you into this world. You really understand things from Mario's perspective. Even in the horror, like, the horror is very, like, out of the periphery. It's very much like, oh, like, did I really just see that? Did this really just happen? It's it's almost, like, supernatural in nature. And it just, like, it just, it takes a very grounded thing. And then for a moment, you're like, wait, what just happened? Like, what, what did he just experience? Like, it creates this sort of, like, otherworldliness that's kind of tied into the religion of some of these characters it's tied into this concept of like the devil that's in this book like the the horror comes a from just like the willingness of things that we are like that we put ourselves in the how we just so like easily engage in violence and it also comes from this this these supernatural things that kind of come at us from out of the periphery and it's just it's a phenomenal book phenomenally written and it's just like a a heart wrenching thriller as well like what's gonna happen next what are they gonna like how are they gonna get out of this situation how are they gonna get out of that situation 
And is the the author seems to know exactly when to include certain elements, exactly when to hint at certain elements that kind of like keep you moving forward, that kind of keep you from like, oh man, like I gotta know what happens next. This was one of those books that I was very much like, I need to know what happens next. I I, I think this is a very like deep book. I think there's a lot of things that on another read, maybe you would extract some from this. So like for for example, there's a quote that a character says a lot, uh, which is that the devil is everywhere. And he also like has this idea that there's only so much killing one man can do before that stuff starts to come back and haunt you. And that obviously is reflected in Mario, who's kind of taken on these kinds of jobs where it's like he's, he seems to be like quite good at them. He seems to be like, very good at killing people, like, like, separating the emotion out of it, like, this is just business, and so I, I think this idea of, like, the devil is everywhere, and that's kind of, like, what that is commenting on, it's commenting on, you know, like, how easily we can fall into these cycles of violence, how easily we can justify horrific acts, and this is something that we talked about with Cabin at the end of the world, like, seemingly good people, like, being so quick to justify horrible actions when, like, there's something at stake. And this is something you see all throughout history, too. Like, this isn't just horror fiction. This is the world. Like, this has happened time and time again, how easily terrible things get justified. And then when you see horrific acts, like, you see there's some extreme moments of body horror that I won't spoil, but those things are immediately, with like, almost, like, justified with religious reasonings, with, like, supernatural reasonings. It's just, like, goes to show again how quick we are to justify these things and some of this is, is probably cultural there's probably some stuff of this that like i'm not familiar with because i'm not you know devoutly catholic or some something along those lines like a lot like the, a lot of this is takes place in mexico and like mexico is a devoutly catholic place and so there's there's going to be some aspect of that, that like i'm not going to identify with but you can see it being used as this justification for like why they are doing what they are doing to the people. And it's also interesting to like that it coincides with this idea of like a journey like through hell because like they they they're like deep tunnels they have to go under to cross the border. And like there's just a lot of like and then in these tunnels there's like these weird night creatures. A lot of like that sort of imagery paired with this story, I think it works just really well. It's really haunting and terrifying. And, like, you, the main character is in, like, a very interesting position because he is like you. He is like you, the reader. Like, you're not sure. He's not sure what to make of any of these things. Just, like, you're not sure of how to, like, take any of these things. He is surrounded by uncertainty. He's not certain what if, if these people are telling him the truth, if he's actually going to receive the money that he's told. Like, there's just so many things that keep popping up that kind of make him go, like, what exactly is going on here? And I love that about this story. And when I first read it, I did have like a singular criticism. I read it because like the whole idea, right? Something happens between Mario and his wife. They split months past whatever. He's hoping to like win her back basically. And so with this final job, he's going to be given $200,000. And he kind of like builds it up as like this is – you know, a way for me to start over. Like, this is this is going to be something where I can, like, just my whole life will change now. And when I first read it, I was kind of like, how is $200,000, like, really going to change your life that much? Like it, like, it certainly will help, but, like, change your life. Like, you can't live on $200,000 for the rest of your life. If anything, it can just kind of, like, set you up to do pretty well. And then, like, the more I thought about it, like, the more... I think I kind of view that amount of money as somewhat of like a litmus test and how much like you will almost kind of like relate to Mario, how much you will relate to the story. Because if you are someone who, you know, has very wealthy, comes from a very wealthy family, like you won't think much of $200,000 and you won't probably identify very much like with this struggle that Mario is going through. But if you read that, and you're like, wow, $200,000, like, like, as I eventually came around to you, I was like, you know what, $200,000 really would change my life dramatically. And so 
I think if, if you start to view the money in that kind of way, like it's because you're from lower class. It's because you're either middle or lower class family. And it's just like, yeah, $200,000 would mean a lot to these people. Like it would mean a lot to me, my family. Like we were middle class my entire life. Still am. And like just that amount of money is almost sort of like gauging how you will relate to Mario and almost kind of gauging how you relate to this struggle of like, if you don't view that as a lot of money, you'd be like, why would anyone go through all this to get that? But to understand that to some, that amount of money is going to truly change lives. And I think that's a very interesting dynamic that exists within the book because you get to certain spots and you're just like, I don't really know if this is worth $200,000. But if you're like, no, two hundred thousand, it's going to significantly like change my day to day life. And it's like, maybe you do keep going. And I'm just inherently interested in this idea of like, how much will you put yourself through in order to like make your life better? In order to do something for a loved one? In order to do something for your family? Like, I I, I kind of am upset that his daughter dies so early in the book because I kind of thought like. You know, a lot of this is going to be used as justification for what he's doing, but that very quickly not becomes the case. And this idea of like what you would do to get money for your daughter, like I think that's very compelling. I'm very interested in those kinds of stories. But it kind of becomes this transformative thing of like, well, this is just a man trying to get his life back on track, which I also think is something that's like very relatable. And I think I really like this character. I really like the story, how it's written. Some of it is written like in Spanish and there's no translations. Like it's not like he says it in Spanish and then the character thinks to himself, like the translation, which you would see in some other works. I like that. They don't include the translation that like, if you want to fully get the context, like you got to do a little work. And I like that idea of like an author kind of engaging with the reader in that way, making them do a little bit of work. I, I like that. And this, I think this is just a very, very great, well-rounded, beautifully written but also haunting and horrific tale and i i honestly like i finished it and i just like thought about it for days on end like it's just one of those books and i cannot recommend it enough it is a bram stoker award winner for a reason and i you really you really should read the devil takes you home i it's one of the best books i've read this year if not it's right there with Come With Me. Like, it's one of the best books I've read. It's one of the most gripping books I've read. Very fast-paced. A lot of things going on. A lot of things to, like, look at and interpret and to pull thematically. These are the best kinds of books, in my opinion. And they're doing it in a genre, which I love. And I have a video coming out about this very soon that I've been working on about the importance of genre. And this book is like an example of that. It's it's why genre is so important. It's why you can do things in genre that you can't do in literary fiction that I think make your story so much more impactful. And I love that this is a crime horror book, not like some literary fiction book. Like I love that this takes place in a genre. I love this book. You should go read it. Check it out. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is your first time here. Like the video. Let us know what you think about this book down in the comments below. Let us know about your Bram Stoker picks. What do you think is a book that should have been included, was not included? All of that. We can continue the discussion down there. And until next time, thank you for watching. Keep reading good books.